In today's episode, we look at a tit for tat county lines robbery, where a failed burglary would result in a rival dealer's life being taken. We look into the police investigation, arrests and convictions, and a revenge attack. That would happen a year later, where three county line crews would team up, which would put a rival member in the morgue. We go to Norfolk Friday, January 28th, 2022. Joe Dix, who is 18 years old, is a member of the third side, an established county lines crew in Norfolk. Joe Dix had been recruited years before and had been leading a double life, and at 18 had managed to keep his dealer life from his family. Though very much in the life, cracks were beginning to show. Meanwhile, rivals Cameron Palmer, 19 years old, Hans B. Harry, 20 years old, and Benjamin Gill, 19 years old, had a plan to rob the den, a stash flat of the third side. Cameron Palmer had a plan with B. Harry and Gill, forming the crew to launch a robbery. B. Harry had, through contacts, managed to obtain a copy of the key to the rival's stash flat. Cameron Palmer then put the plan together to rob the third side crew. Palmer's crew entered the Val Green area and went to the nearby flats and slowly made their way in. They gathered at the door and one of them tried the key and it didn't work. After trying it several times and shoulder barging the door, the gang talked about what to do next. Inside the flat was a terrified county lines dealer from London who at 6.48pm phoned Joe Dix and told Joe to help him. People are trying to get in and they're trying to rob him. Joe Dix, who lived nearby, left and made his way to Val Green to scare away the group trying to gain access. Armed with a large blade, he made his way on foot to the stash flat. By now, the crew had left and they were making their way out of the flats. The crew spotted Joe Dix and began to chase him. After running for several minutes, the crew armed with blades attacked Joe Dix. He hit the ground and the group ran off. Joe Dix had managed to get up and started to head towards the direction of his flat. After several steps, he collapsed. Police were called by a member of the public. A man was lying in the road with serious injuries. An ambulance was called to the scene at Val Green, with paramedics arriving in 10 minutes. There, Joe Dix was found with multiple stab wounds. He was rushed to Norwich University Hospital, where he died an hour later after being found. A home office post-mortem later established he had died of hypovolemic shock and a stab wound to the torso. He'd been stabbed seven times. Two of the wounds were fatal ones. He didn't stand a chance. The victim Joe Dix had a previous conviction in 2021 for supplying Class A. Norfolk Constabulary's major investigation team's focus would be Joe Dix's previous conviction and any known associates. Police would look at CCTV in the area. It'd be the start of lifting a lid on the infestation which is County Lines in the Norwich area. County Lines is where Class A and B product are transported from one area to another, often across police and local authority boundaries, although not exclusively usually by children or vulnerable people who are coerced into it by organised criminal groups. The county line described by the National Crime Agency is the mobile phone line used to take the orders of Class A or B. Areas where products is imported to are reported increased levels of violence and weapons related crimes as a result of this trend. Once someone is sucked into a county lines operation, it is incredibly difficult to get out. Joe Dix had been pulled in while still at school, and like other kids, Joe was told to deliver a parcel and then was mugged, which left him in debt to them, leaving him trapped through fear of violence if he doesn't work for them. His family were totally unaware that he worked for a county lines. At 18 years old, he was into it up to his neck, with fellow dealers in his crew that had each other's back. With the police investigation, CCTV and mobile phone data would be the most revealing. Evidence of a Snapchat text conversation was found on a mobile phone that had been dumped in the nearby river and unlocked by police forensic specialists. Later confirmed, 
Cameron Palmer had been involved in organising the robbery of the flat. CCTV cameras would also show Joe Dix being chased in Val Green. The people giving chase identified as Gill and Palmer. Using CCTV, dash cam footage and traffic cameras, detectives plotted the robbery crew's return journey from the murder scene to Gill's address in Leafroy Road, Norwich. Palmer, Gill, B. Harry made every effort to cover their tracks, setting fire to their clothing they had worn, getting rid of their blades, which have never been recovered, and attempting to destroy their mobile phones by throwing them into the river. Forensic analysts confirmed all three phones had dropped off the network at about 11.20pm around the river on the night of the murder. With the three, CCTV evidence and the burner phone's GPS forensics were used and were traced to their addresses before they tried to destroy their phones. B. Harry, Gill and Palmer were arrested at about 7am on the 10th of February 2022. They all replied no comment in police interviews. The prosecution told the cause that CCTV clearly showed Mr Dix being chased by Gill and Palmer. But in her summary, Elizabeth Marsh KC for Hans B. Harry said there was no evidence her client participated in any stabbing. Nor was he closed when any stabbing occurred, as he tripped while leaving the scene. Cameron Palmer's defence counsel, Simon Spence KC, told the jury a vast amount of the trial had dealt with the matters concerning Norwich gangs and dealing. He said that even if his client was a dealer, he did not make him a murderer. He also contested claims that Mr Palmer had possessed a knife, arguing it would have been seen in his client's hand on CCTV footage. Instead, he suggested Mr Gill may have been stabbed by Mr Dix by way of a lawful self-defence and said it was Mr Dix chasing the men with a weapon, not the other way round. Justin Raz KC for Mr Gill told the jury the case was not of so-called joint enterprise, but suggested a credible alternative suspect, namely the dealer in the Val Green flat, the one who called Joe Dix. He may have been involved instead. It took a jury at Norwich Crown Court around 10 hours to find guilty verdicts. Cameron Palmer, Benjamin Gill and Hans B. Harry were found guilty of Joe's murder and were jailed for life. Palmer and Gill will serve a minimum of 21 years in prison and B. Harry will serve a minimum of 20 years. In a victim impact statement, Joe's mum Emma told the cause on behalf of her family and husband, Phil, Joe was a lovable character. He talked to everyone. And most of all, if he liked you, he would go out of his way to help you. Despite the guilty verdicts, nobody is a winner and we'll never get Joe back. Our life will never be the same. Our lives, past, present, and in the future have been changed. Joe is now a memory. Her family has suffered further distress from receiving malicious messages since his death. She said with some even purporting to be from Joe Dix. She also told the court a memorial garden at Val Green, where her son was fatally stabbed, had been desecrated. But this will not be the end, and a revenge attack will take Joe Dix's family back through the nightmare again when the gang affiliated to Joe Dix would take a life for a life. Alfie Hammett, a friend of Joe Dix, was at the trial and spotted a rival member, Raymond Quigley, from Only the Money Crew, also at the trial watching. Raymond Quigley would be the revenge target. Alfie Hammett, 18 years old, had been forced to move to Ipswich on police bail conditions for his role in a violent nightclub fight in which two police officers and three door staff were assaulted. Alfie Hammett was friends with Joe Dix and often sent messages of sympathy to Joe Dix's mum and dad. The messages were very thoughtful, but no one knew Alfie Hammett was a fellow County Lines member. Alfie Hammett was a member of the IP3 and after calls between IP3 and Third Side, the crew Joe Dix was in, the two crews, after Joe Dixie's death, had agreed to join forces with Joshua Howell, a member of the Nacton crew. Alfie Hammett and Joshua Howell were told to find Raymond Quigley and kill him. On the 17th of January 2023, 
The pair travelled to Ipswich, town centre, knowing Raymond Quigley would be there with his mates. It didn't take long for Alfie Hammett and Joshua Howell to find him. At 3.35 on Westgate Street, Alfie Hammett and Joshua were wearing face masks and had hoods up and were both carrying large blades. Hammett then ran directly towards Quigley and proceeded to attack him. Hal, brandishing a machete, chased after one of Quigley's friends, who managed to escape to the safety of a nearby shop. Hal then ran off up Providence Street towards Tower Rampart, while Hammett, having stabbed Quigley a number of times, ran off in the opposite direction, back across Cornhill. Following the attack, Quigley managed to stagger across the road to get Al and collapsed in a nearby shop. Members of the public came to his assistance and provided initial first aid, with street rangers, police units and ambulance crews arriving shortly afterwards. But despite the best efforts of the public and medical personnel, he died at the scene. A large-scale murder inquiry to identify and locate the suspects was immediately launched following the murder. Officers then began viewing CCTV footage and tracking the movements of the offenders after the attack. Hammett's movements were tracked back through the town centre until he eventually left the main shopping area in Car Street, heading towards Tackett Street car park. He had been wearing distinctive grey jogging bottoms, which he changed out of into black joggers somewhere within that car park. He later then changed back to the grey joggers by the time he returned home. He was then captured on camera in Upper Orwell Street, where he was seen without a mask and his hood down. Hammett was positively identified by officers after his image was circulated across Norfolk and Suffolk constabularies. Meanwhile, Hal's movements were also tracked, following up Providence Street into Tower Rampart, past the bus station and along Old Foundry Lane and then up to Woodbridge Road, towards Christchurch Street and Blanche Street. Hal was identified as a suspect around 48 hours after the murder by a combination of his description and mobile phone analysis that confirmed his presence in the locality at the time of the attack. Officers tried to make an arrest, but Hal had already fled. Hal wouldn't be on the run for long though. Police had arrested him, hiding in Oxfordshire. After questioning Hammett and Hal, they were both charged with murder. Joe Dixie's dad had revealed police had spoken to him to see if he had any connection to Ray Quigley's murder. After they spotted his replies to Hammett's messages. It was established in court that Hammett and Quigley used to be good friends before joining rival crews and becoming bitter enemies. The police found that Joshua Howell had transferred a thousand pounds to an account and bought a one-way ticket to Nairobi. When he was arrested, he was found to have no phone. Alfie Hammett was found and he reset his phone to factory settings. Both denied murder charges. Alfie Hammett, 19 years old, was sentenced to a minimum term of 24 years for murder. Joshua Howell, 19 years old, was sentenced to a minimum term of 20 years for murder. County lines is a menace and by the time you realise how far you're in, the chances of getting out are slim. Most are conned into it like Joe Dix originally was. Education needs to be out there and this is what Joe Dix's parents set up, the Joe Dix Foundation, a charity with an amazing website that offers help to parents, councils and schools. It offers help to those who are trapped in it and to raise awareness of criminal exploitation and prevent any family from enduring the heartbreak that Joe's family have faced. In both cases, all but one of the people involved are no older than 19 years old. The ones who have been sentenced won't be out until their early 40s. It's a circle of madness, where for one education is a major factor and is a must in schools to make parents and loved ones aware and to spot signs. It's a growing problem with no decline in sight, with a reported 27,000 kids trapped in county lines, 4,000 in London alone. The growth of county lines has been attributed variously to cuts in police numbers, but this is not necessarily so. Police have been very good at cracking major local drug gangs 
to the point which it left a void in counties across the country. The phrase going country was used before the title county lines. Going country was always a small sideline, a hustle for London organised crime groups in the 1980s and 1990s. But not anymore. <laughs>